Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be showing you how you can identify fixes using a VOR and DME. Identifying fixes is one of the critical skills you're going to have whenever you're flying without a GPS, because it's going to make sure you are where you think you are, as well as all those critical final approach fixes and things you're going to need later. Let's go ahead and get started. So right now we're cruising along in the Beach 60. Uh, we're flying right now in the Norwich VOR, and we're basically trying to identify a couple different points along our journey so that we know that we're crossing everything properly. Now we've got a couple things all kind of pre-set up for you, uh, ready to rock. Uh, one thing you can see is we're already established on the radial that we need to have. Our power's all been preset, everything inside of here, all of our tuning has been done. We've also done all our identification of our stations and we're ready to go. So let's go ahead and pause for a moment and go ahead and bring up a tool so we can start to identify where we're trying to go here. So one of the things we have here is our lovely sky vector. And uh, what I'm interested in doing today, and as we go ahead and clean up my map a little bit here, is I'm interested in going from the Norwich VOR, which is located right here. This is our starting point. And I want to travel along this radial, find Mogul, find Blatt, and then when I find Blatt, I'd like to take a left and try to get as close to Devaney as I possibly can. So let's go ahead and write this one out. Now, of course, if we were working inside of a regular program, uh, this would take us about half a second because we could just dial in the GPS and be on our way. But the fact of the matter is, this is going to be relatively challenging for us because we're never going to quite hit Devaney directly. Uh, there's some fun ways we could try to find it, but the reality is if we're not riding exactly on it, we're going to get as close as we possibly can. Like I said, this is going to be a nice little exercise and um, seeing if we can figure it out, so to speak. <laughs> of course, what does it do? Puts everything in the wrong order. Ah, uh, why would you do that to me? Actually, I did that correctly. Uh, why does it think mobile? No. Boop. All fixed. Delightful. So this is going to be an interesting little challenge for us. Now, like I said, GPS, this would take a minute. So let's solve the puzzle. So we know we're going to be starting at Norwich, which um, if we take a look over here, you can see I'm already on the correct frequency. We also know that we need to find this point called Mogul. Now, the great thing is people actually provided us with everything we needed to know to find Mogul. And we can actually take a look here that on the 115.6, that's Papa Victor Delta, PVD, that's the middle of Rhode Island, essentially, we know that the radial to get here is going to be the 284 radial at a distance of 26 nautical miles. So let's go pop back over to the sim real quickly here and see what we can do about that. Now, some people in the old days only had a single nav radio. Well, we have two, which makes our life a lot simpler here. So what we're going to do is come to the second nav radio, and we're we're going to dial in 115.60. Right, so I'll swap that real quickly here. What you'll notice is that this one down here did its happy dance, not the one in the middle. Likewise, if I actually were to come over here and go N2, you will now see that I've got about 26 nautical miles away from that particular target. No surprise there, right? So what we need to do now is find where this line crosses this line, aka the two radials intersect each other, which is why they're called intersections or navigational fixes. So if I pull this down again one more time, we can see that we need to do that at the 284 radial. So what I'm going to do is grab onto this thing real quickly here. I'm going to crank it until we get to about 284. Now your brain is going to hurt a tiny bit here. Don't panic. It's not as bad as it looks. We know, and again, let me pull this diagram up so everybody can see this here. We're going to be cruising, 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 cruising. When we get to about 26 DME, uh, keep in mind, by the way, DME is a measure of slant distance. So keep in mind, we have some altitude, so it's going to be greater than 26, just because that's how triangles work. We know when this needle centers here and this needle centers here, we will be crossing the mogul position. Once we've done that, we'll then have to identify where our blat, which is a fantastic word, by the way, position is. Now, I'm going to work myself in advance here. I'm actually going to hold off on that for a second until we are able to actually cross it. So let's go and unpause my sim here, and I'll kind of let everything sort of settle. The plane doesn't like it very much when you do it. Uh, by the way, huge pro tip. If you're able to actually identify where the plane needs to point in order to get to a specific uh, like you know, heading or gyro or course, I always recommend going ahead and grabbing it real fast and making a quick adjust. Whoops. <laughs> Make sure you don't accidentally do that. Put your heading bug on whatever it took to get there. Uh, it makes your life a little bit simpler. Trust me on that one. So the aircraft is it's bumbling around a little bit. I can see my DME is getting smaller. And I'm also noticing that this needle is starting to hike towards the center. So we're still following the Norwich VOR 11 degrees. And we can see just right now, we're about to cross the 284 radial. Now, one of the things I mentioned is, remember, the DME here says 26, but it's not actually going to be 26 because we're dealing with slant distances. One of my favorite things, by the way, is if you look really carefully, this instrument here tells us how fast we're approaching the station. And you'll see here, this is going to drop off to zero. It'll actually go, ba 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 and 99 minutes will spike. And the reason it's going to do that to us is because we're perfectly perpendicular to the station at that particular fix. 
again, maybe not perpendicular, I should take that back, um, but it will drop off and start to get bigger, depending on when we cross that point of tangent, if you prefer. All right, let's see how we're doing here. So I'm going to go speed up time, just a couple clicks here. And there we go. We can see we're just about there, just about there. Boop. And, oh, it's getting the, it's doing the shimmers and boop. There we are. Pause. Let's go ahead and pause our sim for a second here. We can see now that we are crossing. We are on the 11 from Norwich and we're on the 284 from our good friend over at PVD. So that means we have crossed Mogul. So now the next one's going to be a little more challenging. Uh, we're going to be looking for Balat. A uh, Balat is, like I said, a fantastic word. We know, based on this diagram, that it happens to be 115.6 PVD 103. So we know it's 27 nautical miles at the 297 course to find Balat. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to come down here. And we're just going to make an adjustment. You know, you have to be very careful here. So this is going to be 280. This is going to be 290. This is going to be, uh, we said it was 297. So that's going to be 300. Nine, oh, nine, 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 eight, nine, seven. Fantastic. So when this needle recenters, we've found Blatt. But if you remember, we're also wanting to try to head over to Devaney on our way over. Now, in order to get to Devaney, we need to stop flying from Norwich here, which along this radial here. By the way, if you're wondering where I got the 11 degrees from, it's right there. Um, what we can do now is we need to switch over to PVD, um, basically following this. So this is where your brain is going to go, ah, oh, but I love doing it anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here. I'm going to dial in 115.60. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and I'm going to dial in Norwich VOR. Ah, you can see what we're doing. And I'm going to flip these two. Now, in the real world, you would very, very rarely do this. But for the purposes of demonstration, I'm going to show you why it gets very, very challenging. What we're going to do is we're going to tell the plane to hold my current heading. Afterwards, what we're going to do is we're going to switch which one of these devices is going to be following what. Now, the one at the top is coming out of Providence. Now, if you remember, coming out of Providence, we need to fly the 297. Now, remember, the 297 is where Blatt hits Mogul, or hits our lovely Norwich VOR there. Rip, pull that out of the way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab onto my heading, and I'm going to dial this in to my 297. 297. Perfect. And I'm going to take this one down here. I'm going to go back to my 011, which by no coincidence should be more or less centered once we get the, the correct frequency all set up here. Do, 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 do. Whoop, too many. One, two clicks. Fantastic. Switch that back over. Switch that. 115.60, we check it. 110, we check it. So this should be more or less centered, which it is, and this is going to slowly center as we get ourselves closer to it. Now, this is where your brain starts to hurt. So let's go ahead and unpause the sim here. And now what we're doing is actually following this one down here, which is going to be the one that we were following previously. And we're going to try to wait until we acquire this particular radial coming out of Providence. Now, if you're in a situation where you don't have a navigation autopilot, we could have just kind of mentally done this. But one of the things I have learned from um, flying these in the real world is that if this is going to be the one we need, you want to put that on the primary. Because remember, in the real world, you're doing one of these with your eyes, and it makes it very, very challenging to kind of keep up with. So I find it just a little bit simpler to go ahead and do that even though we've made all these electronic twists. Now, keep in mind, in the real world, the more things you do, the more likely you are to err. So you want to make sure you pick a technique that works best for you. Now, one of the things I'm seeing is we're centering up a little bit, so I'm actually going to come a little to the left here, just a tiny bit to the left, to try to keep this centered. Now, if I go over to my DME real quickly here, I can see I'm at 26.5. Blatt is at 27, but it's not going to be 27. It's going to be very close to 27. So we're just going to keep following this one, even though this one is going to be our primary. Again, use the strategy that works best for you, but a lot of times people will do that swap when they get there. One of the things I'm noticing, too, is you can see that our little, little deviation line here is slowly hiking towards the center, which means we're about ready to go ahead and make that cross, which is exactly what we want to do when we get a little bit closer. Now, depending on the situation, if we want to overfly Blatt, we'd have to actually wait for this line to cross. If we wanted to jump onto that radial coming from Providence, we'd actually have to crank this thing and basically start following this right away, which is exactly what I intend to do. So what I'm going to do is I'll change my heading here. I'm going to come a little bit to the left. Again, we're just trying to make it a little bit easier for us. So I'm going to start getting ready to follow this one. I'm going to activate my navigation hold. Now, because we did our work well here, our aircraft is going to latch on to the correct radial. So now we're actually riding that 297 radial away from Providence. Fantastic. Let's go back to the problem now. 
Now, one of the things we wanted to discover was the Vanny, which is this lovely thing right here. Uh, you'll notice, how, again, we're cruising along this right now, the 297. The thing we're interested in right here, of course, is finding this. We're never going to be able to find it exactly. We're going to get very, very close to it. But the thing I know is that it's 110.0, which, remember, that was Norwich? <laughs> See how it all comes together? We know it is at the 337 radial. Uh, it's actually at the 337 radial. It's a little bit, um, and what well, is on the 337, it's not going to be right where we are, unfortunately. It's going to be just south of where we are, which is a shame because we want to get as close to it as we can. Now, one of the things we can do is if we want it to be very, very ultra precise, is we could actually do this. And what you'll notice here is this 293 right now is where we would have to go to get to this point from Black. However, this is not a VOR station. So if we actually wanted to find Devani, we'd actually actually find something to cross-reference it to. And luckily for us, we have something to cross-reference it to, PVD. So what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to grab this and poke it over PVD real fast here. Go ahead and select that one right there. And what you'll observe is this is the 2, 9, or 6 radial, and this is the 3, 3, 7 radial. <laughs> So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come in here. We're going to find a Vanny here. I'm going to dial this into 296. And I'm going to come over here and go ahead and dial this up to the um, 337. 335. Right there. Fantastic. Now, what we know is the moment we cross the 296 radial and the 337 radial out of Norwich, again, make sure you identify all of your channels before doing it, you will be hitting that specific point in space. So what I'm gonna do is a quick mental edit check. I know I'm going from Providence, that checks. I know I'm going from Norwich, that checks. I know I'm on the correct frequency on that one. I know I'm on the correct frequency on that one. So I am bombing this today, or not bombing in a bad way. I'm uh, crushing it, I guess, is really the terminology I should be using here. But one thing I wanna do is I just wanna check my cylinders, because every time I look away from the airplane, something bad happens to the airplane. Nope, we're fine. Cylinders are actually really, really good. We can probably close those suckers up again. We're not going very hard in the engines today, so we're going to be gentle. Meanwhile, my weather radar is like, ah, there's nothing but crap today. It's like, yeah, I agree with you. All right, so what I see now is I'm riding on that radial that we picked, the 296 radial leaving Providence. Actually, it's not quite 296. Uh, let's call that 296. It's a little better. And I know that from Norwich, we're looking for that lovely 337 radial, which we're getting kind of close to as well. Now, what we're trying to do is, like I said, find Devaney, even though it's not on one of those highways in the skies, the airways. So let's go ahead and uh, give us a little bit of uh, my uh, students always call it alternate tango, which is Alt-T for those of you who fly X-Plane. And we're just going to speed up some time. And what you're observing here is my lovely needle is starting to hike towards the center. I'm just going to give it a few moments to go ahead and hike towards the center. And you also notice we're flying away from Providence quite smoothly. Looking good, looking good, looking good. Again, we're on alternate tango. We're... we're Sped up time here. Looks good, looks good, looks good. Here we go, almost to that point. Ah, delightful. Let's grab another tool real fast. And just like that, we've just crossed the Vanny. Now, as you probably sit here going, wow, that's pretty cool. You could basically find any space in the world just by basically triangulating two of these different tools. Is there any other cool tricks you can show us? Well, there actually is another cool trick that I can show you, and that's the fact that you don't only have to use two crossing radials for the purposes of identifying a point. Right now, by the way, um, we probably could take a gentle turn back onto our re original course and actually take us over to a Windsor Locks if we wanted to. So actually, while this thing is cruising, I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing kind of cruising in the direction I actually wanna travel towards. There we go. So this thing's now going to go ahead and take a delta turn and take us back towards uh, basically Bradley. Uh, it's not too, too far from here. As a matter of fact, if we really, really wanted to have some fun here, we can actually dial into it and uh, see if we can pick it up. Let's see, 117.05. Let's see if it's going to give it to us today. 117.05 switch. Whoops, why did I do that? No, I did that right. I did that right. Whoops, helps if we shut that off. Uh, we're actually pretty darn close. Uh, we're about 15.4 nautical miles away from Bradley right now. So we're doing pretty darn good here. I like that. I like that. And you can see uh, we've done a really, really, really good job today as far as getting that set up. Now, one other cool trick we have, of course, is the ability to identify something using the distance to it and a radial. And this is one of the really, really cool tricks that we have at our disposal. Now, one of my favorite little places to go, of course, if you wanted to go ahead and take a we'll grab our little screen here. Let's say we wanted to fly an instrument approach here. Let's go do, uh, I'll do ILS-33 here. And uh, let's say we need to find this lovely little thing called Hadex. Now, one of the things you'll notice is if we were landing at 108.55, a localizer, which is basically a one radial uh, VOR, if you want to think about it another way. If we were on the 328 here, and we know we are at a distance of 12.2, at 
the desired altitude of, let's see, Hadex is, uh, I think it's 2,500. Yeah, 2,500. We would know that we're in this particular place in time and space. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and shut off my little heading. I'm going to flip over to heading. Well, before we do that, let's go double check to make sure our heading is set correctly. It's looking pretty good right now. Looks good to me. I'm going to go ahead and flip that on real fast. I'm going to go ahead and switch over to that uh, other channel. Like I said, that lovely localizer. Boop, boop. Pop that one over. Um, I expect this thing to be very grubby. There it is. We'll go ahead and select that 328 degrees, as you probably remember from before. Burp, 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 burp. And it's got to be 328 right there. We know we're on this distance, but because of our DME, we know for a distance of 12.2, we're in the correct spot. But one of the things you'll observe is I'm not in the correct spot because I'm too high and I actually crossed it. So using some of the magic of the slew key, whee! let's go a little harder on the slew here. Whee! Go ducking into the lovely cloud here. Isn't this fun to play with? Of course, I have to resettle my altitudes here. Otherwise, this game is going to get really grumpy at me. 2,500. Boop, boop. One of the things you'll observe now is I'm about 20 nautical miles away, and you can see that I'm trying to track down that one particular position. Let's go ahead and I'll shut that down for a second before I have to fight it the hard way. There we go. Let's go ahead and do some a quick little instrumenting ourselves here. There we go. Coming on down. Looking pretty good to me. And just need a little gentle down again. Not too bad. This airplane's relatively easy to fly compared to some other models. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Ah, it's on alt mode, that's why. Let's go put it on an at mode. <laughs> you put at mode in, you can see that it'll actually settle itself. Uh, nose down, nose down. This is called driving the flight director. It's good times. Down, down. <laughs> so as we can see, we're trying to approach that particular position known as Hadex. And now looking right here, I can see that we are approaching its radial pretty smoothly. As a matter of fact, if I wanted to, I could probably go a little bit steeper on it. But noting that I'm at a distance of about 17 and a half nautical miles means I'm perfectly fine where I am right now. But the thing I know is if I am perfectly lined up with that 328 radial and I'm at 12.2 nautical miles at 2,500 feet, I will have known that I have located Hadex intersection. So let's go ahead and do some quick uh, time acceleration here. Oh, starting to see some needles getting a little happy there. You can see very clearly that this one is getting a little closer. We're about 15 nautical miles away now. Starting to get a little sensitive. It's going to do that. Speed up time a little bit. You can see we're nice and leveled off. And just like that, we start to approach our points. And again, one of the fantastic ways that we can do it. And if we ever wanted to actually check to make sure we're kind of got the right general gist, is we can actually flip frequencies real quick. Just double check to make sure we're on the right side of a particular location. But again, you can see just how all these things start to happen. In our particular case, we're a little bit too far to the northeast of that particular waypoint, even though our distance is correct. So if we were to basically uh, kind of grab our airplane and do one of these things a little bit, we could get ourselves a little bit better lined up with it as we kind of sort of hunt down that particular radial in the sky. Enjoy.